Well, thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, we're really excited about our talk today, and we're going to talk to you about something we're incredibly passionate about, and that's designing our business model to ensure impact and innovation from farm to cup, and looking at every step of how we do business and leaving no rock unturned. I'm Ahmed Rahim. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Numi T. I'd like to share with you a bit about what Numi uh, stands for. We really stand for celebrating people, planet, and pure tea. What does that mean? Obviously, celebrating people. We've become, in our short time, just in over 15 years, the largest fair trade organic premium tea company here in North America. We work with over 10,000 fair trade tea farmers across the world, covering every single continent, including Australia even, um, India, China, Africa, uh, South America. And working with these farmers is obviously a, a big chore because they're these indigenous farmers in small communities around the world, and they need a lot of hands-on attention. And working with them on what their needs are, whether it's a school, it's a hospital, it's a road, um, and we'll, we'll get into that more. But um, being the largest uh, fair trade tea company and celebrating people is, is something we take really seriously at NUMI, something that we work diligently on, not just while we're there, but while we're here, and in working with people on the ground and certifying parties. The other um, big attribute of NUMI is celebrating planet. Um, all of our uh, products are, are certified organic. We're committed to uh, preserving the planet and leaving it better than w when we came to it. And not only is it just about organics, but it's also about sustainable packaging. As we know, packaging is one of our biggest Achilles heels. Um, so much goes to landfill. So we don't follow the trends of those see-through tea bags, or we don't put cello wrap on our tea boxes. We don't do the small things that really add up over time to uh, preserve the planet and, and, and reduce what goes in the landfills. And the last thing we do is uh, celebrating pure tea. We're by far the most premium tea on the market. We only use real ingredients. Anything on the side of the box, you can read the ingredient, you know what it is. You won't see natural flavorings or oils or any type of other artificial flavorings uh, other than the actual herb or tea. So a little bit about the company. My sister and I started Numi Tea about uh, 15 years ago. We always give thanks to our mom. Um, and this is a picture of Rima and I when we were in Baghdad, Iraq. That's where we were both born. So coming from Iraq, it, it forced us to think a little differently. Being raised in America and Europe, we have to think outside the box, um, not only from our background and, and the oppression our country's been through, but just in general as artists. Um, my sister and I went into this business thinking, what if? Always asking questions. How do, we, how do we really create a brand? How do we create a legacy? How do we do something that's different and that really has a lot of values? So celebrating people, planet, and obviously the sustainable measures were just one step in that direction. And the other thing that really mattered to us was innovation. How do we become innovative? There's a lot of tea brands on the market. When we came out, there was nothing out there in premium quality. There was nobody that cared about values. So we wanted to be innovative and really bring out products that, that were unique to the country. Our first product that we brought out was this dry desert lime. This lime is uh, native to Iraq. It's our drink of hospitality, just like you have green tea in China, Coca-Cola in the US. Um, we in Iraq, we have this dry desert lime, and it's called Numi in Arabic. And it's, one of our, our, it's our namesake. It's one of our staples in our line. And when we talk about innovation and impact um, on the supply chain level, it's really driven by direct relationships and fostering those strong relationships and having hands-on engagement at the farm level with your suppliers. Now, a number of brands in the industry and a number of firms do not do that. We think that's been, really been the NUMI difference, is having this direct hands-on relationships. Um, and for the lime, we began importing the lime in 1999 from Oman. And for many years, we were working with a number of farmers, about 250 family farmers. Each of them had a tree or two trees in their yard and we were importing this lime, but the coordination wasn't scalable for that, nor could we achieve organic certification or fair trade certification or other social certifications. So as the business grew, we partnered with partners in Egypt, and our Egyptian partners are the folks who really helped us really develop the lime and make it a much more commercial enterprise. And in 2010, we helped them become organic certified. In 2011, we facilitated their fair trade certification. Now, the organic certification alone increased their wages by more than 20% just through the premiums on the price. And then with the fair trade, that increased wages and income by an additional 10%, let alone the fact that all those other, other parts of that financing was going directly into their community development. So we were really happy with how we took the NUMI namesake and took it to the next level. And after the lime, we thought, what else is popular? I used to have tea houses in Europe for many years, where I lived for about 10 years, and um, Roebus was getting popular there in the 90s. So when I moved to the, back to the United States in 99, I thought, wow, there's no Roebus in this marketplace. This is one of the most miracle herbs in the world. It's high in antioxidants, contains all kinds of magnesium, zinc. 
and it's also way, all, all the way from South Africa. Brian and I had the opportunity to go to South Africa earlier this year to go visit our rooibos farmers. And this product is uh, done incredibly well for Numi. It's one of our original flavors. We're still the number one selling rooibos in the natural food marketplace. And um, it's, it's set a theme for us and as far as innovation. How do we do things differently? The lime, the rooibos, and, and a couple other items that we'll talk about have really kept Numi ahead of the curve and really allowed us the opportunity to, to, to set ourselves different differently, not only in the marketplace, but in the minds of the consumer. And that innovation really carried on to the supply chain side. Now, most people don't know, but the rooibos industry is dominated by a couple exporters who control about 80% of the market. And but with, the, with that control, they also control the majority of the farmers in regards to price, quality, quantity, access to market. They even control the rooibos seedlings. It's, it's, it's a crazy situation. So what we've done since day one is we've partnered with the other 20%, and we tried to grow that base. And we've worked for more than 16 years with the same small farmers and the same exporters that we did back in 1999 when Achmed first imported the tea to the U.S. And the big thing about the innovation that made this, made this accessible for us was that we needed to share in the same vision as the suppliers, not just in South Africa, but anywhere. And sharing that division really helped, division really helped us in South Africa on economic and social development over the years. What we're really excited about is currently we're engaged with a new supply chain project um, and this supply chain project is all about reinventing the rooibos supply chain, the redistribution of wealth to the people who need it most, and how do you empower the farmers to a level where they have control of their own situation again. Um, we're very excited about this, and we started with some upstream financing earlier this year, making sure that farmers are paid immediately for their work, also preventing bottlenecks and capacity issues and allowing them to expand their business. And the next thing we're going to be working on is a program called Fair Labor Practices, where we'll look at every step of the rooibos supply chain. And we'll be focusing on employer, um, employee benefits, focusing on uh, facility upgrades, and looking at guaranteed purchases for pre before we even harvest the product. So we're really excited about that. And many years passed, um, about six, seven years ago, we thought, what's next? What are we going to do that really becomes innovative? Pu'er tea was a tea I've been drinking for over 20 years. It's a tea that's fermented for 90 days. It's put in big piles, and in that process of fermenting, it turns from green to black, and all these great health uh, benefits and bacteria grow. It's kind of like a composting process to some extent, but it's really the only tea that's fermented. And we got we got fortunate where Dr. Oz uh, talked about pu'er as this fat-busting tea because it's supposed to you know help you with uh, losing weight. It's great for digestion. Has incredible health benefits. So about eight years ago, we were the first to introduce pu'er on a large scale. We have a few different flavors. Our top seller here is Emperor as well as our chocolate pu'er. And this is again separated us in the marketplace, really kept Numi front and center in press and in the eye of the consumer as an innovative brand. And our pu'er partners, they live uh, in the mountains in Yunnan, China, in these autonomous villages right on the Burmese border. And our pu'er tea comes from ancient tea trees, many of which are more than 600 years old. And this area is known as the birthplace of tea. When we first visited these folks on a sourcing trip, about six years ago, uh, no, probably about eight, eight years, years ago, ago yeah. forgive me, about eight years ago, uh, we immediately recognized that this was, had great potential for one, innovative product, and two, social impact. So we partnered with the local people there, and we've been working on a number of projects ever since. We've been traveling there multiple times a year for several years now, and I have to say it's perhaps my favorite place in the entire world. Um, but when we first started partnering with them, step one was to help them become organic certified. We hired organic consultants, we worked with them directly, and we got them certified under a wild harvest certification. We've been paying for their organic certification ever since. And step two was to implement our fair labor practices, the things we're just getting started in South Africa. This is our flagship partner for fair labor practices, which is NUMI's own proprietary program for, dri for driving social sustainability in the supply chain. And fair labor practices is fundamentally a continuous improvement program that looks at the labor conditions, it looks at the work conditions, and it really fosters direct trade and sustainable agriculture. Now, over the years with these partners, we've invested more than tens of, ten, we've had not just more than $10,000, probably closer to $50,000, tens of thousands of dollars on the number of different projects that we're working on with them. And we've seen tremendous impact through our audits and through our processes with them. Um, first of all, we were able to rebuild their factory. We were able to provide increased wages. We provided occupational health and training, health and safety training. And we also were able to do a number of other benefits that, that have really drive, driven advancement in their community year over year. 
And, you know, and hearing Brian, I just think of all the trips we've taken all around the world and, and all the travels and the villages we've been in and all these indigenous communities. And, and one of the pleasures of this is we get to try and, and, and find unique herbs and teas that, that aren't exposed here to this, this marketplace in, in U.S. and in, in the Western world. And on our travels over to Indonesia and Asia, turmeric kept popping up. Why isn't this turmeric anywhere here? It's like this huge ginger, I mean, in, in the big chains in, in Asia, they sell 100 counts of just turmeric and tea bags. And so uh, a couple of years ago, I went to the team and I said, hey, well, why don't we do turmeric? You know, this isn't hot. This isn't uh, hot yet in America. We had just come off of doing the savory tea uh, we launched four years ago, dried vegetables and spices. That didn't do so great. But, you know, we love to try new things. So just uh, a year ago, we launched this line of turmeric. It's done incredibly well. It's, it's the miracle sort of root, just like ginger. It's quite popular all over the world. And, and now with uh, these four new flavors we just introduced, they've really uh, had an incredible success in the natural food and now even in the grocery channel um, and we and uh, have Brian speak a bit about that and we were just happened to be in Madagascar uh, what four months ago one just of the poorest ago. countries I've ever seen in the world and uh, yeah as Ackman mentioned our, our turmeric supply comes from a farmer cooperative in Madagascar and they live among about 15 villages along the river um, and one of the interesting things is they actually transport the turmeric and the other spices they produce out of the region via canoe it's pretty crazy to see the different steps that it takes in a supply chain to get this product to the Whole Foods store shelf. It's unbelievable. Um, but when we first met them in 2013, we realized that they had just obtained their organic certification. But we wanted to figure out a way to take the partnership to a higher level. So we started working with them on fair trade certification. It seemed to be the obvious choice. They were already a cooperative. Uh, they already, there was already fair trade operations in Madagascar from some vanilla projects. So we partnered with them and we helped them become fair trade certified. We contributed thousands of dollars to the whole process, not only for the certifications, but for equipment and for training and a number of other things to get their whole farm and the community up to speed. And in 2014, about mid-2014, I'm happy to say that they earned their fair trade certification. And we were able to buy all of the fair trade turmeric they produced that year, which then infused additional funds back into their community for development projects. And when we were there a few months ago, it was almost like a celebration on the side of the river. It was unbelievable. And we spent a lot of time talking about the great success we've had so far and where the relationship can go. And that's where we got a lot of new ideas on what's next and what can we do next. I'm going to let Ahmed talk to you a little bit about that. Yeah, and you know, I think from my sister and I 15 years ago, always asking what if. Um, you know, for us, it's not enough just to be organic. It's not enough just to be fair trade. It's not enough to pack package it in the most sustainable packaging. We always like to think outside of the box, and we always like to ask everyone what if. And, and about a year ago, actually, before we went to Turmeric uh, and Madagascar, we wanted to do something bigger and, and grander than, than some of our values. And we, we came up with this idea of, you know, without clean water, how do you have good tea? And there's over 700 million people without access to clean, safe drinking water. So we put together um, an idea called Together for Hope. It all boils down to water. And when we were in Madagascar, you know, we asked the people, and we always ask the farmers when we bring them together, what are your biggest needs? Is it school? Is it hospital? Is it roads? There, they're drinking river, they're drinking water out of the river, they're boiling it, and it's a sickness. They're getting a lot of illnesses there. So it was perfect for us to really um, uh, pilot our uh, Together for Hope program with them. We'll be drilling over the next few months uh, several wells that'll take care of thousands of farmers and families there. And um, this Together for Hope campaign is, is something that we want to continue on with a lot of our farming communities. Next steps is India, where our Assam and Darjeeling grows in the Northeast. We're looking at South America where some of our other products grow. But for us, it's, it's, it, it, all, it all boils down to what can we do? You know, how can we drive a difference? What can we do uh, in the local community? And, and, and learning from these people about what, what's been done. And um, so we always ask everyone, what if? And what can we all do together as a collaborative? Thank you so much for having us today. Thank you.